Welcome everyone. This is Studio 56 Boutique and I'm Brenda Murray and I'm really happy to welcome you today for my interview with my friend Renata Lahal from Spain. And you're going to love Renata. Renata is a fabulous artist, a very prolific artist with a really unique style and unique approach and technique that she uses to her art uh, with a wonderful background story that you're going to find very interesting. And I know you're going to be really inspired and happy to meet my lovely friend, Renata. So Renata, can you come into the call? There she is. Hello. Hi, Hello. Welcome. Hello, everybody. Thank you for being here. And thank you, Brenda, for having me here, inviting me for this uh, artistic chat. So uh, welcome, Renata. I'm so excited to show everyone your art. Renata is a very prolific artist. Um, who uh, is just making sketches every single day and has a club and has thousands and thousands of followers. And um, she has a really unique style and approach to her art. And so Renata, let's just talk about your background a little bit. I know you were born in Switzerland. You were raised in um, Colombia. Bogota, yeah. Bogota, Colombia. And you currently live now in Madrid and you spend a lot of time traveling back and forth to France. You teach in French, typically. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I tell about about the starting from my blog, maybe. Yes. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Uh, because I was a graphic designer uh, freelance uh, to grow up my kids at home, it was easier. And then uh, and then after I wanted to, to draw more, and uh, and then uh, I saw that drawing every day it was good for me about this. Uh, this thing, a uh, health thing I had. And then I um, uh, start to draw every day. I challenged five other women, women oh. to do it with me. And we sent us, uh, it was in 2013, uh, um, our drawings by telephone because uh, it was on WhatsApp in this time and all this. And uh, we did this during six months. After each one, they stopped. I continued. I still draw every day. And then I wanted to share this. So I started my blog. And uh, then uh, in January 20, uh, 2015, since then, each Friday, I propose a free uh, online workshop. It's not a Zoom, I say it, it's written. I give like a homework they can share in a private Facebook group. And that's the idea to motivate people to draw uh, uh, regularly um, because it's good for us. Yeah, it is good for us. Yeah. So um, I remember, Renata, that you, you mentioned um, that you had uh, a health scare. Uh, about 10 years ago. Can you tell us what yeah. happened? Um, I had a breast cancer. Is, uh, yes. And then uh, um, I was happy in my life. Uh, three kids, my husband, I think it's okay. But uh, uh, 10 years before, I started to write in a small sketchbook, uh, notebook, what I will be, I, what I want to do when I will be retired, right. so many years later. So I was always living in the future, never now. I was working uh, for my clients. I was doing the thing for my kids, perfect, but I, I didn't take time for me. Mm -hmm. And then I had this cancer and it was like, do it now after it's maybe too late. And then I, I, I was watching a, a an American, uh, uh, I don't remember his name. He said, ask yourself every day, uh, what would you do if you have only 24 hours to live? I, I didn't de do this. I said one week because 24 hours is too sh short. <laughs> so uh, I thought what I would do, not what I don't uh, want to do, but what I would do if I have just one week. And it was my kids, my husband and and drawing and so we all not only me we have all a lot of obligations we we think we have to do this we think we have to do that just to to make pleasure other people and it's not to be selfish it's, it's just do something for you and then you are happier and when you are happy all people around are happy also because you 
because if you are not happy, the other people uh, don't want to see you anyway. <laughs> so yeah. It's, uh, yeah. It's so, so it kind of gave you clarification, right, for your life. You started focusing more yeah. on your art after that. Think now and not, don't wait for uh, later. Yeah. So uh, I don't have any sketch notes to do this. I, I do now what I want to do now. So I, uh, even if I have a lot of work because the blog and my uh, online courses and the free workshop, all this takes a lot of time, all this uh, internet thing, <laughs> but, um, but uh, I draw every day and, uh, and I, I do something for me. Cool. Well, let's have a look at your art. There we go. Beautiful art. And what I really notice about your art is there's a lot of text in your art, like a typical classical quintessential urban sketcher. A lot of notations, a lot of writing um, on the side, in the middle, and so on. Um, beautiful. Very beautiful. Really enjoyed that a lot. That's wonderful. Um, it's a way to remember better what, um, what we, I have done. Always. That's right. I know, and I've heard some some artists, uh, some urban sketchers say it's 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 better than a photo album because you've got all these notes and you've taken the time to sketch that thing and really look at that thing, um, and so you'll never forget it. As soon as you open your sketchbook, you remember yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah. So um, let's just go in and look at your art a little bit more closely, one piece at a time. Um, and let me. There we go. So we're starting off here, um, Renata, with your art and your sketch. And we're gonna show that this is the start of your sketch. For your first thing you do is you put in the watercolor. Yes. Um, I, I uh, usually, not always, I start with some uh, stains, say. Uh, Stain. mm -hmm. Yes, I, I prepare roughly. So I, uh, I, do, uh, I do some, uh, uh, watercolor chooses and then I put like this and then I put some green a bit like this and then uh, I splash and then I don't wait that it's dry I take my pen and then I start to draw uh, in the wet uh, in the wet watercolor I go right I started in the middle and then I went right there and then uh, left and so and then I I complete okay. the whole Wait, yes, I have sorry. I have some questions. Uh, sorry. <laughs> okay, so I don't see a pencil mark anywhere on this paper. Sorry. No pencil. Ah, no, no pencil, no eraser. Never, never in your life. <laughs> okay. No, no, because um, it's also what I teach to my my readers is when you erase. That's not. Uh, it's uh, just. You erase because you want that's perfect. You erase because you want that is perfect. And then you erase, you do a, a line and you are always doing the same mistake. And uh, you waste a lot of time mm -hmm. and you don't go forward. Uh, I say that uh, it's like in life. Maybe you say something you shouldn't uh, say it. You cannot erase it. It's like this. You have to assume it. In a drawing, you maybe you do a line that it's not good. Only you are going to know it uh, because at the end there are thousands of lines and nobody will see it. But if you start to do line, uh, scratches on it or trying the, to, you cannot erase it anyway with a pen, but if you do a lot of things to hide it, then yeah. 
you see it even more. It's like uh, when you do in life something you shouldn't say. Yeah. Uh, there is a uh, phrase in, in French, you say, uh, when you say something you shouldn't, that you are a uh, rami, rami yeah, on a boat. What's the name? Uh, what on a boat? On a boat, you have two sticks in each side. And oh, you do... the oars? Uh, <laughs> like a well, paddle, I... like the oars on a boat? Uh, well, I don't know how to do <laughs> That's a matter. Anyway, okay. you try to, 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 to correct this uh, yeah. silly thing you said. Then yeah. it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. It makes it worse, right? Yes, it's worse. It's better. <laughs> don't say and keep on. And so another... here... Here, yeah. Renata, you you went in straight with watercolor, and then you added some ink lines. Is that with a fountain pen? Uh, no, it's uh, but, but it could be with a fountain pen. It's just with a pen, pilot pen. pen. Yeah, and it's a permanent one. This one. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. Yes, and that's why I this one has a a, a tip uh, like this and not cut and then i can go in and it doesn't uh, da damage because it's wet i can do it after the, dry, the watercolor gets dry and then i continue it doesn't matter but the ink flows in the watercolor a bit not only a bit but uh, because it's wet the ink here goes quicker out and okay. it's it's nice doing like this but uh, yeah. i could wait i can do with a hair dryer and and dry it. And the, this uh, picture is all outlines or contours done. Mm -hmm. Here I start to do again with watercolor the roofs and mm -hmm. the shadows. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. And then you're adding, yeah. adding more it, and more detail. Yes, detail in pen and in watercolor. And at the end, I put some letterings. Here are very few letterings just the place is too in france so yes yeah yeah cool does anybody have any questions for renata about her art um about the fact that she goes in straight with the watercolor and so the watercolor that you're applying is it is it referencing the color that you see or you're just using whatever colors you feel like using at that time uh for example there was a house red house so i put something like red yes i'm not going to uh, I, I do it by eye and quickly very quickly you're not painting inside shapes because there are no shapes there no. yeah you just I do the shapes after yeah yeah okay so lynn is asking do you always draw from life no uh sometimes i have so uh, so much work uh, in the office and I can only draw at the night so I do from whatever I, I can uh, photograph or or life I don't mind about this I know that's not the urban sketcher way but I think it's better drawing that not drawing that's <laughs> the other thing yeah yeah and uh, Lisa is asking um, are you using a limited palette I have here uh, 15 colors, but I don't use them. I use about eight of them. Uh, I use usually the same. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, yeah, six, eight, eight colors only, yeah. Yeah, and are you one of those people who have made your own handmade Altoids tin watercolor? What is that that you showed us? Um, that's, um, I think I bought with something else inside, and then I, I sticked the the little inside. And you glue them down with something like with yes, um, no, this thing for putting on the walls paper. You you oh, use uh, for like the a kids. Sticky tack. Yeah, yeah. Yes, this, and I have a cover. It's with a cover. Yeah. And then when I am outside, I do my mix inside. It's not white, but I don't mind because I just I need a place where I mix. And I don't mix uh, exactly like this. I put a bit and sometimes inside in the, in the box. Uh, and when I draw at home, I don't have it here, but I have a plate. And I leave yeah. 
uh, drying uh, to dry, but I did the day before and the day after, I come in and I keep doing. So yeah. the drawing from today is the result of what happened yesterday. So it's just to say, it's just a drawing. It's just a drawing. Yes, yeah. and having fun. Yeah, yeah. having fun. Yeah. That's cool, so super great. All right, can you tell us about this sketch, um, Renata? This one is in uh, Switzerland, in Zurich. Mm -hmm. I, this one is in Zurich, yes. in uh, Landis Museum. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's uh, uh, first ground, some trees, very dark to, to contrast with the second one. And what uh, I can say here is the hand lettering. And mm -hmm. uh, as here I started with line first. And oh. then I, uh, yes, you will see in the examples that there are uh, both of them. And here I did the lines first mm -hmm. and then the watercolors. And you see there is no sky. There are very few colors because I don't want to have a drawing with a lot of colors. I, I often see uh, that uh, you lose contrast because you put too much uh, colors. Right. So just the limited palettes, just to keep a lot of the white paper. And you gain time also. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. So, and leave the, the paper uh, breathe also. Sorry? To leave the paper breathe. Let, let the paper breathe. Yes. And this drawing from uh, what we are going to see, it's the only one in a sketchbook with watercolor paper. I don't use watercolor paper. I use the other ones that are not watercolor. And my, it's the same with my brush. It's not a special watercolor, it's a synthetic one. Uh, it's just to say, uh, I, I am not fizzy with uh, materials and things like this. Uh, to say, you can do art without paying a lot of money. Right. So you're, you're, you're not uh, advocating for certain kinds of materials. It's just whatever people feel comfortable with. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I had a, once a teacher, uh, I said, ah, because I was doing acrylic and I said, I don't have the expensive ones. Uh, do you mind? He said, no, the artist is not the, the brush is, is, uh, is you. So it, it's true. It's what you say the, the material can help, but uh, but it's not the most important. Right. And this drawing is in Colombia, mm -hmm. and uh, I did lines first there, mm -hmm. and uh, it's uh, my mother lives still uh, in Colombia, and this was uh, there. Uh, what I like is these lines on the sky, on yeah, from electric ones. Yeah, and yeah. There is a perspective. Uh, two points it's not not so difficult there uh, it's easy done not too many colors it's always maybe you can see uh, my colors are more or less the same ochre green a bit of red and there, there is no blue in this one no no so what would you say to people who uh you know who who want to have the perfect sketchbook I, i've seen some of these sketchbooks you know where people it looks it's it's so well it's like a scrapbook it's so well designed that it's just perfect there's no mistakes in it at all like a book yeah yeah <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, my sketchbooks are with a lot of things inside they are more a life sketchbook uh, right. I put my, uh, my, what I am planning for my students. I have lists of ideas. I have a lot of things other than drawings. Suddenly you see, oh, a lot of writing for planning from my blog and for my courses. And then you see a drawing like this, for example. And this one is, it was a uh, Instagram, uh, uh, Life with uh, Alvin. I don't know if you know Alvin, uh, Brenda. He yeah, does. Yeah, uh, Alvin Wong. Uh, I don't know. Alvin, but Alvin from Hong Kong. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. he invited. He invites a lot of people. And he invited this time Nina. And Nina, I love her work. Uh, she yeah. does a lot of. Uh, she's very creative. And then they did this. And uh, why I did this? I don't follow all this because I don't have 
the time. <laughs> but uh, because I like drawing all things and not, uh, I'm not searching for the nice uh, and beautiful uh, buildings. I like the old one uh, and they are easier to draw also than these big buildings or, uh, or castles and things like this. And these car were, were perfect for this. And yeah. here I did color first. Okay. And Yes, this one is color first and then uh, lines. Yeah. yeah. Yes. At the end, oh, you don't know it necessarily. Yes. Sorry. Yeah. So, what would you say to people who are who are thinking? You, I mean, you obviously have a really strong style that you've developed over many years. And what about people who who you know are looking for their style or they're concerned about having a style? Um, I. First of all, I will say that's not so important. What is important is to draw, to have fun. The style is coming with the time and that style can change. You can see Picasso all his life, the, uh, the, his styles change the whole time. And then there is uh, Austin Kleon. I don't know uh, if uh, you, the, uh, you all you know him. Austin what, what Kleon. Was the name? Austin Kleon. He did books about uh, uh, still like an artist, for example. Mm -hmm. It's very well known. Uh, he has a blog every Friday. He has a newsletter with a lot of links, inspiration uh, links. He has an office. One side he writes, he's a writer also. On the other side, he draws. And he says that uh, anyway, you cannot invent everything, it's already done. Why I am doing uh, stones uh, and watercolor first, I don't know from where I have this, but I know I am not the only one in this world doing this. And then he says, and I think it's uh, as you ask me, Brenda, what, how to do is copy the people you like. You don't post it in, uh, in, in the in the Instagram, Facebook, you don't post it. Just, just for working yourself, you copy not just one person, you copy, say, five persons. And okay. then you understand what this person uh, does, why you like it. And then as you are, it's a study, why uh, there are a lot of uh, artists, uh, the maître, the maître, they, uh, they, um, uh, there is an uh, exhibition now in Paris, one artist, I don't remember his name, who copied a lot, long time in his life, uh, Rembrandt. Okay. And uh, yes, and both are very well known. And, uh, and his style, you don't recognize Rembrandt, Rembrandt, but you have to learn from somewhere. When you are at school learning to write, you copy letters also. Mm -hmm. And then you have your style of writing. Maybe it looks like another person, that doesn't matter. Only you don't copy and post in Instagram or Facebook, that's, uh, that's no good. But copying different, you, you, you learn. You learn and you will yourself uh, find it. But you cannot with 10 drawings, it's... Uh... <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. you have to put in your 10,000 hours, that's what they yes. say. And I haven't got them, I haven't them. <laughs> no, I think you do. <laughs> I put a counter on my blog uh, and I count how many hours uh, I could, maybe in two, three years. <laughs> okay. Do you, how, do you know how many hours? Where, where, what does the counter say now? Uh, I have, no, I don't. I, I did this several years ago because oh, okay, it was okay. funny, but uh, I don't remember, no. Yeah, oh. okay, okay. <laughs> cool. All right. So um, a couple of questions here we'll just get to. Um, uh, okay, so, so this is Mahela from Mississauga, Ontario. Hey, Mahela, I'm in St. Catharines, Ontario. So I'm waving to you because you're just over there. <laughs> and she says, uh, it's not a question, just a comment. Just want to say that drawing directly in ink without pencil and eraser was very hard for me at first, but now with practice, it really makes me feel free uh, of fear of making errors and I draw faster and without inhibition. So yeah, yes. that's, that's good yes, to know. But if you do, do pencil first and then you do pen, again, you are wasting your time. And then your drawing, it's not uh, so spontaneous. It's more, and usually when you do, uh, do a drawing in pencil, it's nicer than when you do over it in, uh, no, in 
paint seal and then with paint yes yeah and uh, it's not so spontaneous it's no it's uh, yeah. uh it's the word is laborious if you're yeah. taking all this time to make a sketch in pencil you've got mm -hmm. a perfect and now you go over the whole thing all over again in pen you're really drawing it twice yes um mm -hmm. and but uh, i i when i teach i tell students my students don't use a ruler but how do you feel about rulers i think we share the same view about rulers no no rulers no compa compass compass yeah uh, no uh nothing like this free no. free and uh uh, you are asking me about this nice sketchbook. It's because uh, I, I don't judge anybody, but still I know a lot of people. I have a lot of friends who draw super good, very yeah. nice. Yeah. But they need to do it in pencil. They need to have a very nice sketchbook from the beginning to the end. Uh, I prefer to have all in the same because I, I want to be free of several sketchbook uh, easy easy way. Yeah, you know, I think what you're doing, you know, today in this talk, Renata, is you're just really inspiring people to give themselves permission to make mistakes, to have fun, right? Yeah. And to be free, just to be free. Just a drawing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I know that when I, for my own students, I see them, if they pull out a ruler, I just say, if you use a ruler, it's going to suck the charm right out of your sketch. Because yeah. now it's not a sketch anymore. Now it's a schematic for, you know, like an architectural drawing. Exactly. Uh, and, uh, and it won't have charm uh, yes. because perfection is the opposite of charm. And that's yes. true in people. It's true in people too. Yes. Yeah. I, I learned a lot, you know, I am Swiss German uh, and in my family, everything, it's like this and, uh, you know, th this, all this, I don't know how it came, but it's cool. <laughs> yeah, just to yeah. relax. So John is asking, what greens do you use? What greens were you using? I use the sub green and the phthalo green. Oh, phthalo green and sap green. Mm -hmm. Yes. I love to put ochre with the sap green, like uh, the drawing from the cars. And I also, I like the uh, cadmium yellow or Indian yellow. These are a bit like Indian yellow, say. In the last one, I think it's Indian yellow. Indian yellow with sap green is very good also. I don't need the, the phthalo because with Indian or, or cadmium yellow and sap green, uh, yes. I, I couldn't live without the the sub green, the sienna, the burn sienna, yeah. nor the ultramarine. That's my three best. Your three colors. best. Okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> see, you see, if you come to these talks, you learn all the secrets of these artists. Um, Lydia says uh, she's not sure, but if you were saying Austin Klein, the name of that man. Austin, ah, Austin Klein. Klein. Wait, I will is that, write. Is that the man? Uh, is that what you're saying? Yes, I I will. I cannot write it in the. Yes, Austin A U S T E N. Austin Klein. Austin Klein. Is that the yeah. name of the artist you're talking about? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I know. I know a lot of people who come to these um, uh, interviews. They take notes. They write it down. And then they look it up. Yes, Austin Klein. Yes, cool. but I don't remember how you write his, uh, his name, last name. family name. Okay. Yes, that's okay. Um, Lydia is telling me that you say Cleon, Austin Cleon. Yes, yes, Austin Cleon. Yes, okay. exactly. Okay, yeah. cool. <laughs> All right. So, um, and Suzanne is Lebrecht is making a comment. Choose prolific over perfect. Perfection will come with time. That's good advice. Uh, yeah. Yeah, cool. Um, I think, so, sorry, I think it's like this. Yeah, that's what somebody said. Austin Cleon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. perfect. So uh, Robin is asking if you can repeat your three, those three colors. It was sap green, burnt sienna, and blue ultramarine. Ultramarine blue. Ultramarine blue, yes. You see, Robin, yeah. you tuned in and you got all the secrets. <laughs> Okay, let's have, let's continue on with looking at your beautiful art, and uh, and tell us about this one. Uh, so this is right in yeah. with your pen or watercolor first. This one is this one. <laughs> um, 
is uh, I did first uh, the background yeah. uh, with uh, ochre, and then I went in with the uh, Pigma sepia color. Sepia, you say in English? Sepia. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a bit like this one, a bit uh, uh, getting uh, not so fresh. And uh, it, it's very nice to see the, I have the echo. You hear so it? still have, no, I don't hear an echo. And yeah, now it's better. I, it's just, I have to say it's an echo and then it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then with the pen, I did the, um, the holes in this uh, garlic mm -hmm. and uh, I did all lines, contour first and all. And then usually, as you see, I put the text like this also because I think always uh, on my uh, readers or students. Uh, so when I tell them something, it's already written down. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I have to think I do it in English, in Spanish or in French. That's uh, the other thing. And then at the end, I put some uh, blue and a bit of red, uh, 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 pink. Right. And uh, usually, not always, but usually I put also uh, color pencils in it. I really? Like, yes, I like a lot to, to working with color pencils. Uh, it gives, a, a, I, I like doing color pencils because yeah. it very zen, it's more, more zen than with the cross hatching. Cross hatching, it's very, uh, but this three one, uh, usually I put it after at the end also. And this is uh, my two books. Mm -hmm. The one on the top is, it came out uh, the 26th of May, it's recent. And the other one, it was last year. The first one is um, more chapter by chapter, the theory of mm -hmm. uh, the Torino. It's, it's quite practical, um, but telling how the textures and things like this. And the other one, the Dessiné la France, is uh, a lot of places in France, Mm -hmm. And I explain uh, step by step some drawings. It's not right. a video, but it's uh, a lot of steps inside. So this is you and you're, this, you're teaching a workshop right on the ground. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and, no plastic, uh, nothing, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, super. It's, and that's my material. Yeah. This material has the place in this handbag. Always yeah. I have with me the materials in my handbag. Yeah. And why? Because it must be be easy to be uh, ready to draw anywhere anytime i yeah. can also go to the restaurant and while the food is coming i can draw that if you take big papers and big material you are only going to draw at home so that's to that's more to show uh, less you have easier it is easier yeah to yeah it's great. It's a, a more of a minimalist approach to sketching. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, I'm just gonna there. There we go. Uh, this one. That's it. Yes. Mm -hmm. This is a drawing in uh, in Greece. I start this one with lines. Okay. And then, as you can see, there are not a lot of the colors. They are uh, strong, uh, contrasted, mm -hmm. but not too much. A bit of shadows. Uh, the clothes, no skies, and uh, the hand lettering. And yeah. uh, the, the line in the middle is uh, is the, the sketchbook. It's, yeah, the, <laughs> it's the crease, it's the middle yes. of the sketchbook. Right, yeah. right. Beautiful, so fun. And what a great memory from Greece. Ah, yes. And here, uh, it's another way of doing. On the left-hand side is Greece, and on the right hand side is uh, I was in a hotel in Paris and it was there uh, if when you go up the stairs inside yeah. the hotel not the nice place it wasn't very nice here I think it's nicer here because I put uh, nice colors and then on the left hand side are lines and then I did the floor and the sky in blue and on the right hand side is splashes first color stones color first and then the lines and at the end you see on the parts going like this i put some co uh, some uh, color pencils just oh, a little okay. bit yeah right right and at the end i put the hand lettering i mixed in the middle you see in the middle uh, it's uh, one side greece and water paris and then i put the drawing together 
Yeah, Perry Edouard and Agoche Greece. Cool. Yes, and also in the drawing. So it looks like this one is the same, but alone, I, I it's, uh, it's just the one side. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah, and this is uh, also in Greece. On the right hand side is uh, testing watercolors because um, this was two years ago, before mm -hmm. Corona, the year before Corona. Right. And uh, I, I didn't used to do water because it could make. Uh, <laughs> it's not so easy but uh, this year I tried a lot and I'm quite happy and on the background I did uh, uh, what, uh, color pencils mm -hmm. and on the left is watercolor with uh, pencil handwriting and then I put together the two with the moon tines, uh, on the top yeah I love this block of, of lettering right in the middle dancing um, like the water <laughs> very cool very cool um, did you you just started in drawing that, or did you put some pencil to kind of outline the the way the lines where you wanted to? Uh, uh, when I do the hand lettering like this, uh, usually I do it la like this. Yes. Yeah. But you can do it with a color pencil first. You can do the waves, mm -hmm. so you are a bit uh, more uh, so for. Uh, when you uh, do this at the beginning, it's maybe easier when you do some lines like this first and then uh, writing inside. It's clear. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah. That's very, it's very cool. Very it's, it's inspiring to see, you know, other ways that people approach um, drawing and then adding the, the sketches as well. And this so is, is this the... one drawing. No, this is, uh, you see, from the beginning where I showed the step by steps on the background. This yeah. is the different drawings I put in uh, Photoshop to do the oh. cover from my book. Oh, it's I see. Cover. Yes, I put several things together. Different to kinds compost. of, yes. Right, right. Cool. This is just a street with two persons. I don't do a lot of people. Uh, I, I used to do or people or the rest. Uh, yeah. That's rare. I, um, Maybe one day I will do more. I don't know. Mm -hmm. And I put some cars. I like the tree inside in there. I think that's what captures my attention is your uh, technique uh, of the tree. Not really a leaves or even an outline, just um, an indication that this is a tree is here. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. cool. A lot of uh, things can help is the the as you see there are some spots when you do like this this gives like if they were uh, some some leaves yeah. they are not leaves they are just uh, spots yeah. yeah yeah this is a drawing i did for the book uh, the last one and uh, for example that's an example when i start with line uh, sometimes uh, i go with hatching so far that I don't want to put color. Yeah. I, these mushrooms, I, I didn't do lines first, nothing. I, I started in the middle from the big mushroom. And then from there, I drew the negative space, the backgrounds, the shadows. And it, what I like doing this is the construction, how it all comes uh, is uh, like uh, uh, born yes uh, a mushroom is born because mm -hmm. you make him appear thanks to the background right and uh, and all this hatching in, in the part in the round part and all uh, i like it's also meditative way uh, I, I like doing this and then there is no need to put color or no i put a background first quickly and then i i do lines but right. not but uh, putting color after i think it uh, it uh, it's it's not the same okay. and here is a uh, line first and the way it was i was showing my my how you say people uh, students in a workshop how choose to color one part from the drawing and okay. here is the part in front we are interested in this and the rest is there but we don't care so just a part Right, so just your, so it's going to focus all your attention on just the colored part, yes, uh, because that's the, the part that's important for you. Yeah, exactly. Cool. This is in Madrid. 
uh, I don't remember if I did lines first or by, uh, color first. Uh, I was watching at this and uh, I don't know. Anyway, here, that's an example. I did a sky. Yeah. And there is blue, cobalt blue in the sky. And there is ultramarine blue on the building and mm -hmm. some uh, ochre. And um, I don't remember the name from this one is uh, transparent the pirate. Uh, transparent this, orange, yeah. Yes, I like this uh, orange with blue. It's very nice. Mm -hmm. And usually I put always green, but there, uh, there wasn't any green anyway. It is in Madrid and it's a road. There is no green there. Yeah. But then uh, I, I wouldn't, uh, I, I did a sky there. But if I had green, I think, or today, I think today, I, I wouldn't put sky if I had green. You know what I mean? Right. The, the sky was cool because I had blue also on the, on the houses. Mm -hmm. well, that's. Uh, so what's really capturing me about the sketch is the first thing you look at are the roofs and the sketch itself, but then my eye goes to the word Madrid and the beautiful lettering that you did there. Very nice. Yeah, and I put it's a nice place to live. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and the colors I used because I thought it was a ceruleum, but uh, you can see that it's cobalt. <laughs> yeah, beautiful. And, it's cool. Yeah. This one is a, a complete layout. Right. Uh, you can see hand lettering, writing, drawing, and, uh, and the colors I used. This is uh, Würzburg, it's near Frankfurt. My sister lives there. Mm -hmm. And I have on the top right and the left, I have about the same idea. I have the roofs are in color and the green. And mm -hmm. on the one on the right, there is no green. Mm -hmm. but the uh, all is colored there yeah. is no sky it's no. no need to put sky there uh, right. a lot of people think uh, i need to put sky but uh, no sky and then i put the hand lettering but when i do this i think first uh, uh what uh, i will more or less do it's not just one drawing in a page right when i do one drawing a page i think if i put something else where or how I cross it on the page. Uh, and here I had to think a bit because if not, uh, my, big, uh, my drawing could get bigger and not uh, putting it. And then I put also the color palette on the left. Yes. And all this decoration, all is like a travel sketchbook. Yeah, I, I, I love that idea. I love the idea of the, the uh, palette on the, on the left. I know uh, Santi Sales does that as well. He always puts his palette a little uh, dab of the color that all the colors that he uses every time he picks up a new color for a sketch um, he will put like a little dab on the side of the page looks so cool and it, it also helps you to remember what colors you use if later you know you want to go back you're not yeah. sure yeah but usually there I did it completely but usually I start and then I forget at the end <laughs> to put all of them but uh, usually I know that uh, in a moment I come back to another color so they are always the same no, it's, it's okay it's no need to put all, uh, all mixes yeah and um so were these sketches all done on the same day uh yes yes okay so you yes. you know so so you're sort of planning this page this this layout page all in one day you know okay i'm gonna so did you start with the top right or where did you start i start left here and the, okay. that's on the same place so, so it's easy yeah yeah uh, all yeah. this is the same place it's a, a place in, in this uh, uh city yeah and then uh, you can go around there is very nice and then after uh at the end i put the the, the small text and this usually i go to google uh, to see what to put about it because uh, mm -hmm. there is not always a brochure yes yeah. right right gorgeous uh lettering i love that lettering right in the middle of the worth worth worthberg mm -hmm. Würzburg, yes. Würzburg, very nice, <laughs> very cool. Let's, uh, I'm gonna uh, escape from sharing screen for a minute and let's just see if um, if we have any questions. Oh, there's a lot of questions in here. Um, 
Yeah, and Lydia says you have a beautiful technique and, and she does, that's really true. Um, and uh, Christine is asking, what are your favorite colored pencils? And I'm assuming that Christine, you're asking which brand? From uh, colored pencils. Mm -hmm. Actually, I have the, 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 the ink tents. Ink, ink tents? Yeah. Yes. Are they water soluble? Yes, but uh, um, I don't use it as water soluble. Okay. Uh, I bought it, I saw this in um, advertising Jan Feneli did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I bought them to try them, but I don't put water because uh, uh, I like doing color pencil like this yeah. and then you put water and then all is finished and it's yeah. it's a pity the time you spend doing this yeah so i think the, the the intense brand is softer right so when you are drawing with it it's not like a sometimes watercolor pencils can be kind of waxy and hard i find and so when uh, you draw with them dry the paint is not coming off onto the paper so well, but I think this brand, the Ink Tense, is a softer watercolor kind of lead on the inside, right? So when you draw with it on the on the paper, you get more pigment. Is that right? That's the idea, yes. But yeah. I used to use also the Carandash, yeah. and uh, they are uh, a little bit harder. I like them a lot also. And uh, I have from the school still a Prismacolor. I don't know if you know them. In yeah. Europe, they are not very well known. And a student told me, oh, they are very expensive. I don't know. My father bought me when I was at school. I have still them and they are not watercolor. I don't think so. I don't know. No, I don't think so. No, but I do portrait drawing with this. And it's, I put uh, red with blue for, for portrait drawing. And uh, I didn't put you these drawings because uh, because I didn't think, <laughs> but it's very nice to do it. Also. Yeah. Um, so Lisa, I, I see your question. Are they available in English? Can you rewrite the question? Because I'm not sure what you mean. What What is available in English? If you can, I'm going to raise that question. Yeah, I'm not sure what she, she's asking. And um, Christine is asking, what's your favorite sketchbook size? A4, A5, A5. And do you have a brand that you recommend? Yes, I used a lot this one uh, this is uh, moleskin okay yeah yes mm -hmm. but now since uh, nearly a year i discovered the sea white of brighton the sea white of brighton have more pages yes have uh, big uh, larger here yeah have elastic the paper is not watercolor like what i use it's the best i have ever used the sea white of brighton sea white uh, of Brighton. And yes. you know, uh, Sante, no, I mean, um, Vincent de Planche also uses Sea White of Brighton. Watercolor or normal? I don't know. <laughs> yes, I, I use not watercolor because they are also, yes, they are very good. Uh, they are a little bit cheaper than the small skin, mm -hmm. but the shipping is expensive. Oh. And if you buy this, buy a lot <laughs> yeah so so the sea white of brighton is uh the if they're if people are looking it up online it's one word sea like the ocean white like the color right sea white yes yeah, sea white are one word of brighton and it's brighton, uh manufactured like, in yes. england is that yeah. right yes i have uh, if you want i give you after i don't know how you want um on my blog i have the what i use I have your, your Moleski. Yes, I have also, I, I liked also the Moleski, no, Hanemule. Hanemule, yeah. the name is Sketch and Design, is the, the, the model. It's the same, A5, but mm -hmm. they don't have rounded corners. They don't, I have an elastic I put, but it's too wide to put in my handbag. That's why I I don't use them in this moment. But these are my three uh, best. Yeah. Say. Okay. So a few more questions here, and um, Tracy is asking if your books are, are on Amazon. Yes. Yes. Yeah. But it's in French for the moment. But they're in French. Yes. Okay. Um, 
the editor is uh, Achette, is one of the biggest in France, and they used to each year to go uh, to, uh, I don't know how you say, uh, they, the editors, they exchange the, the contracts and this, and then they translate. And because of the virus, uh, the corona, they haven't been there. And uh, these uh, feria, ferias, I don't know how you say, when several uh, uh, exhibitions, like exhibition. Uh, Other festivals? Um, like when there are several car providers in the same place, you know? Yeah, so you're, you're talking about, for example, Clermont Ferrand, the Clermont Ferrand Carnet no, de Voyage. No, it's a, something, another name, I don't know how to say, that doesn't matter. Anyway, because of the virus, it's not, it hasn't been possible to, okay. to, to, to do with the other foreign editors, uh, publishers. And then uh, maybe next year it will be in English, for the moment it's only in French. Okay, um, so a couple more questions here. Um, so uh, I think John, Jason is asking, is your Friday course in French or in English? It's in French. I have, a, a, how you say, an, an app on my blog, translate, and then you can put translate. I have Italians, I have, my courses are not, uh, I have a club in English, but my courses are all in French, but then mm -hmm. on the blog, you can put translate, the free one, and then you can read it in, uh, with Google Translate, it translates the whole page, and then you can read it in Italian, English, what, whatever you wish. Okay. No, not whatever, I just put four languages. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Jason's asking if you can describe your process or your tools for the hand lettering. Uh, for instance, in the image of where your sister lives, the three sketch layout, how would you approach putting that hand lettering in? So obviously you're doing it at the end after the sketching is done. Yeah, I think a bit uh, where I could put it, for example, mm -hmm. but I don't uh, spend the whole time of it. Uh, uh, then I put in the middle the title. That's not normal. I don't put always in the middle. And uh, and then uh, I I I put in these spaces where they are some place. I play a lot with this. I it's quite spontaneous. I I think a bit at the beginning. I want to put lettering, but as I did at the beginning, I think some time ago. I know uh, uh, I don't go until the whole page. Then I know I I can put some hand lettering on it. There is some place. And uh, it's not all, uh, <laughs> I don't know if I answered, okay. No, that's a good answer. Um, so a couple of comments here. I'm just reading them on the side while you're talking. So um, uh, Jason and Deborah have both said that the, uh, like the URL, which we'll just say out loud is Lays Image uh, to Renata.com. Okay, so that's all in French. Um, yes, but uh, if you go to my homepage, uh, you see my face first, <laughs> and then I invite you to subscribe. Yes, and then you get the the, the Friday uh, workshop by mail. Yes, mm -hmm. and uh, you cannot see them on the on the feed. Okay, because uh, people uh, were getting lost, and so that's why I, I did like a canal, and my newsletter are in French and there is no way today to translate it. Uh, the providers don't have this and I cannot translate each uh, newsletter because it's a lot of job. Yeah. So um, I, I think we're gonna uh, finish up here, but I just want to um, tell everyone our really exciting big news. If you're about to click and and, and take off, you're, you're gonna miss it. And that is that we will be, uh, uh, Studio 56 Boutique will be hosting a live online workshop with Renata in English. And in this workshop, it's going to be called Layout and Lettering. And she's going to actually teach um, and give you exercises and teach her technique for how she puts the lettering and the layout together. 
And uh, so there's going to be some exercises and there's going to be a, you can sketch along with her using a photo <clears throat> using a reference photo. Um, and then there'll be some um, examples and exercises for how to uh, apply the lettering as well. So that's really exciting. It's not on the website yet. We uh, we haven't got it up yet. Um, but uh, if you check back to www.studio56boutique.com, or if you follow us on our Facebook page or Instagram, or um, if you are following our uh, newsletter, um, it'll be announced in there. And the tickets will be available next week. Is that right, Renata? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if you say so. <laughs> All right. Uh, so a couple more questions that just to finish up. So Suzanne wants to know the name of the sketchbook, not the moleskin, the other one, the brand. Was that the C White? Yeah. C White of Brighton. C White of Brighton. Okay. And um, uh, Renata's blog is lazyimage 2 renatacom So I think we covered that already. And uh, Elizabeth says Trey Bien. And I'll also, I just want to say a very special hello to uh, everyone who's in the call today from Quebec, La Belle Provence. It's where my family came from for many, many generations. And I don't often get people from Quebec in uh, my uh, calls. And I'm so excited that you're here. So bienvenue and everyone from Quebec who's in the call. I just I didn't want to forget that. It's <laughs> exciting. And I just want to say thank you so much, Renata, for a lovely afternoon. Thank you for thank sharing you, this beautiful, beautiful art <laughs> and inspiring us all that we can make mistakes. It's okay. Yes. We don't thank have you, to Brenda. worry. We don't have to be perfect. We should just have fun with our art. So thank you so much, Renata. Thank you, Brenda, for uh, having me here. And uh, uh, I thought I can tell this. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Take care, everyone. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful Sunday afternoon. Take care.